Here are five reasons the whip sucks in D&D 5e, and one way that you can make it amazing. I want to talk about why this weapon is not good and has been consistently punished over the course of 5e's run, but I also want to show you that even potentially one of the worst weapons in the game has some amazing potential both for roleplay and as a mechanical beast. So stick around till the end to find a custom-made character that uses the whip to what I believe to be some of its best potential. Now the number one way in which Wizards of the Coast made the whip suck in D&D 5e is by giving it a d4 damage dice. Everyone who's tried to put a whip on their character knows the pain of choosing a weapon that is a martial weapon, a, a difficult weapon to use and a difficult weapon to get proficiency for, and having a d4 damage the same as a dagger or a dart, which also can be thrown at people to give even more reach than your simple whip. It is so galling to put this weapon on your character when you know there are almost always better options for you. A rapier as the classic is the finesse weapon, the weapon of choice for so many dex based builds that want to deal some good damage in melee. And it's sad, it really is. I have multiple characters that I have equipped with a whip with the intention to definitely use it this time and it never comes into play. It never comes out in combat, it just feels like a suboptimal choice. Even if, as I hope to point out in, later in this video, it sometimes isn't the suboptimal choice. Another reason why it feels like the whip has been left in the dust by the designers of D&D 5e is that, well, there's no feat that benefits you using a whip. Now, let me clarify that. Of course, Sentinel exists. It is a feat that is specifically designed so that when you hit people with opportunity attacks, they can't move any further. And so if someone provokes an opportunity attack from 10 feet away from you, and they're holding a five foot weapon, and they don't have reach, then they can't hit you without moving next turn. But what I mean is that there is no specific weapon feat for the whip. We have feats like Crossbow Expert, Great Weapon Master, even Sharpshooter, which boosts all ranged attacks. Polearm Master, for goodness sake. And then there's Whip Guy. A guy with a whip with no specific weapon mastery of this martial weapon, which is supposed to be difficult to learn how to wield, which is why only a few classes get access to it as a proficiency. It is insane to me that the whip has been this much forgotten. Another reason why the whip simply sucks by the rules design of D&D 5e is that you can't effectively grapple with it. Think of it, the fantasy of a whip user whirling around this rope and then lashing out a connection scored against an opponent's legs and the whip curls around and they are pulled off their feet and grappled. That's part of the fantasy of a good whip user. That's what we all want to be in our D&D sessions if we're using this weapon. We want to be able to make awesome, interesting manoeuvres with this weapon that is not very good at dealing damage. It's got to be good at something, right? Well, you can't really do that either. The rules state that you have to have a free hand to make a grapple with an attack. So even if you hit with your weapon attack, mechanically, you need to grab onto that person with your free hand. Otherwise, the grapple doesn't take effect. Your whip is essentially useless for grappling people on its own while you have a shield or another weapon in your other hand you need to actually be able to pin them down to grapple them. Meaning that whips essentially have very few cool things that you can actually do with them, unless you're a Battlemaster fighter. At which point, why not just use any other weapon? 
I mean, you get access to it. You can make all sorts of manoeuvres with all sorts of weapons. It doesn't even need to be a whip. Yet another reason why the D&D 5e whip sucks is because of exactly what we've been talking about this whole time. It is a martial weapon. Which means, crucially, rogues don't have proficiency in using whips. I mean, come on. Potentially the best class for this weapon, a low damage dice weapon, but a class that likes to add low damage dice together, stack them up on top of each other while sneaking, while being subtle, and then lashing out from the shadows. A whip seems perfect for that, but no. Rogues cannot use whips proficiently without taking a dip in fighter or specifically being a hobgoblin. Now that might sound crazy, but that is pretty much one of the only ways without multiclassing to get a whip on your rogue. And who wants to play a hobgoblin? Seriously, who? So even a class that loves using low damage dice weapons to stack things on top, even though the whip is a finesse weapon and could have sneak attack on it, it's not allowed by the rules because you can't be proficient in it. You can certainly wield around a whip all as much as you want as a rogue, but you're not going to be that good at it. And besides, what class is more thematically tied to whips than rogues? I mean, come on, that entire class is daddy issues incarnate. And they can't use whips proficiently? Come on. Now, our fifth reason why whips kinda suck in D&D 5e is because of a recent change that occurred in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Relatively recent. In that book, the spells Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade were changed, becoming slightly more specific in the wordings of how they could be used. Fair enough, these were some of the most powerful spells in the game. But by nerfing them, indirectly one of the better whip using builds in the game died that day. It used to be that if you were able to take the feat Spell Sniper, which doubles the effective range of your spells, you could arguably increase the range of Booming Blade to 10 feet. As a component of casting Booming Blade, you need to make a melee weapon attack. The whip is a melee weapon. It has the reach property of 10 feet, so you could stand 10 feet away from your enemy and Booming Blade them, imposing a penalty if they should choose to move towards you afterwards. If they don't have reach, they have to move towards you if they're a melee combatant. It was a potent, powerful synergy that almost guaranteed that your Booming Blades would get extra damage every single time. And it was killed when the rules changed around Booming Blade. The spell text was updated and rules have written that combination no longer works. It's sad. So what do we do about it? Is the whip a dead weapon that is completely impossible to use? Well, no. It has some really interesting properties. It is a finesse weapon, meaning you can use your dexterity to make attacks with it, as opposed to strength, so you can build a character that isn't multi-ability score dependent. It has 10 feet of reach, meaning you can make attacks from outside most humanoid enemies' threatened range, meaning that you don't need to waste actions or bonus actions on disengaging from your foes after you do some damage to them. It is also a one-handed weapon, which makes for a very interesting situation where you could wield a whip and a shield, which you can't do with pole arms, which pretty much lock you into a strength build and are a bit of a struggle to wield one-handed for the most part. The whip is different to a pole arm, and although the powerful combinations will always exist around Sentinel with Polearm. The Whip can do similar things in some really interesting stylistic ways without having to be a strong character and therefore being able to use the best stat in the game, Dexterity. So, I've made a build that takes full advantage of some of the interesting intricacies of Whips. The fact that they are a skillful weapon. The fact that they require training to master. The fact that they don't do terribly much damage, so that damage needs to be boosted. And the fact 
that they have reach and so can create this style of play where you don't provoke many opportunity attacks, if any at all. So how do we do this? How do we make the whip actually work? I've started off with a ranger who automatically get proficiency in the whip and I've decided to make them dex based to take advantage of the finesse property. Now this ranger is also going to take advantage of the reach property. Now, this ranger is also extraordinarily quick due to their race being a shifter and taking the subclass that allows them an extra five feet of movement when in their shifted form. So with 40 feet of movement in most combats, that's a really good starting point to make the whip really effective. The whole point of this character is to run up to an enemy, make a whip attack and get out without taking attacks of opportunity get away to a safe distance where the opponent is not easily going to be able to hurt you. And using the specific shifter subclass that we picked, if your enemy gets within five feet of you, ready to make that melee attack, you can use your reaction to hop back 10 feet without taking an attack of opportunity. It's a slightly cheesy build that revolves around dancing around the battlefield, using your whip to hurt and using ranger spells like ensnaring strike stun and lock your opponents down at fourth level you can also use sentinel to do the same thing essentially creating multiple enemies who are stopped from coming to hurt you or any of your party you become this whirlwind of death this whirlwind of whipping death as you circle round an opponent 10 feet away from them they can't hit you as they're trapped by ensnaring vines is whipping and whipping and whipping away in a slightly sadistic sense. It takes some of the elements of the whip that we discussed as, as potent and mitigating it with the damage dice by picking Fey Wanderer alongside the revised ranger's favoured foe. You're able to add a bunch of cumulative d4s on top of what the damage you're already doing and that starts to add up, especially because the whip is a one-handed weapon and so you can take the dueling fighting style to get an extra two damage on every whip strike. This build only gets more interesting as you get to fifth and sixth level and start unlocking 45 feet of movement and an extra attack. So now you can truly dance around the battlefield, equipping debuffs and whipping folk who can't even touch you. The background for this character is some sort of lost fey child who has after being inducted into a lord and lady's court and playing tag and dancing around all day, has gained a lot of skills in evasion and deception, but has been put to work as part of a fey contract, as a punisher, as a masked agent of vengeance, using a signature whip to strike terror into the heart of their enemies. Freed from this fey pact, finally, they are free to make their own way, as a faceless and sometimes costumed adventurer with a whip in hand and spells at the ready and a shield if they need it this ranger being the fey wanderer brings all of the hurt from their past in the darker regions of the fey wild to bear on their enemies inflicting serious pain and annoying the heck out of your dm trust me this is a really difficult build to get hit on with the reactions to step away from opponents and with the potential stunning effects of wrapping people up in vines it's a really potent sort of thematic build as you use your skills from tag and dance as a child to dance and weave in between your opponents slashing your whip across their backs and inflicting fey punishment on them all that's just one way to make the whip work which I recommend trying to do. It's always fun to try and design with limitations in mind. And this in particular was a brilliant challenge because I've recently seen Bob the World Builder, absolutely no shade on him by the way, he makes excellent videos. But I've seen him try and fix the whip in some way, try and make it more powerful, give it extra maneuvers, battlefield maneuvers, similar to Battlemaster or maybe change the damage type, make multiple versions of whips, a cat of nine tails, a chain. But sometimes it's fun to just go with what's there. This particular build cannot be achieved with any other signature weapon. 
partly due to the terror that whips invoke in us. This build is built around the whip as kind of a dancing dark fae trickster punisher using this iconic weapon of medieval torture against their foes. And if the whip were just another polearm, if it were considered under polearm master as, yeah, as another option, then it would lose some of this lovely flavour. It would lose the fact that it has this tiny damage dice that you boost with multiple other tiny damage dice, creating a sense of creeping doom. And if the whip were removed, or were simply a d8, it would lose its unique, oh, your character uses what? That I think this build really plays off. By all means, this is not the most powerful whip build you can make, but it's damn fun. And it gives you so many options to lock down, piss off, or move away from your enemies just as they're about to do something good. Give the whip a go, even though it sucks. I hope I've convinced you that the whip can be really useful if built around in your character concept from an early enough point. And I hope I've encouraged you to build your own characters using whips. And if you do, make sure you send them my way. I'll be putting this in the description. So keep an eye out and maybe see if you can use it in your game to traumatize your DM. Or at least make them come up with a few monsters with pole arms or reach themselves to counteract your 10 foot keep away strategy. I'm sure you'll figure it out after that though. If you want to continue on with this build, I would recommend probably Sentinel or Shadow Touched as feats. Boost your wisdom and your dexterity. Your dexterity to hit and to damage with your whip and your wisdom because the Fey Wanderer subclass allows you to add your wisdom to charisma checks that you make as well as making your spells even harder to escape from. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, drop me a like, give me a subscribe, I'd very much appreciate it. And if you have any video ideas, drop them in the comments and I'll see about getting around to them. If you want to hear me talk about any niche weapons, your favorite build, your favorite race, go ahead, drop it in the comment and I'll see what I can do. But until then, I've been the Grungeon Master. I hope you've had a great time and see you in the next video.